help with? Yes. I'm afraid that I have another task that requires your assistance. The Adventurer's Guild has recently received a commission directly from the Tenryo Commission. The assignment is both urgent and dangerous. After assessing the assignment, the Guild has concluded that seasoned adventurers are required. Naturally, you came to mind. <laughs> Just another day on the job for us! Allow me to explain. The Tenryo Commission recently issued an arrest warrant for a young Oni by the name of Arataki Ito. An Oni? You mean those big, tough-looking guys with horns on their heads? That's correct. This particular Oni is quite vocal and audacious, so he already has quite the reputation on the streets. That said, he has never been caught up in major trouble of any kind. So it came as a surprise to learn that he has recently been accused of stealing things, and sometimes even whisking away the people themselves. But it doesn't end there. When the Tenryo Commission dispatched a Doshin to apprehend him, he assaulted the Doshin before making a getaway with his accomplices. So let Paimon guess. It's up to us to bring the Sony in! No problemo! This does sound like a job for the Traveler! She'll be back with that Oni in no time! I have complete confidence you will succeed. However, please exercise caution. This Oni also happens to hold a vision, and is the leader of an organization known as the Arataki Gang. Hmm, you're right. We have no idea what we'll be up against. Better play it safe! We are still investigating Arataki Ito's potential motives behind these incidents, as well as his current whereabouts. But please ask around in the streets as well. There will likely be others more familiar with Ito's circumstances than I am, who can provide you with useful information. Thank you. I will await your return. No time to lose. We haven't been to the Yai Publishing House in a while. Paimon wonders if they have any new books in. The one we read with A that time was pretty cool. Come on, this is a no-brainer, man. There's only one thing worth wishing for, and that is a ton of Mora. But the exam's next week. If I fail again, I'm seriously done for. I'm better off wishing that my exam goes smoothly. Ah, it's just an exam. Trust me, there's no problem you can't solve by throwing Mora at it. If it doesn't work, then just keep throwing till it does. What are they arguing about? It's quite a spirited debate. Huh? Really? You guys don't know? You need but stand on this land at midnight, lower your head and recite a special incantation, then your wish will come true! Looks like you guys really aren't in the loop. This, my friends, is the next big thing. A highly effective wish ritual guaranteed to make your wishes come true. A wish ritual? That actually works? Right? I didn't believe it at first either, but that changed when it worked for someone I know. It's this guy called Kunihiko. He's practically always been unemployed, wastes his days away, and he owes a lot of money. Like, a lot. But get this. I don't see him for a few days, and suddenly I find him dressed to the nines and feasting at a high-class restaurant. I heard it directly from him. He used this wishing ritual, and the next day he woke up to find his whole bed filled high with mora. His whole bed was filled with... 
Of course, I'm sure the part about waking up lying on a bed of mora is a bit of an exaggeration. But whether you believe it or not, it's not exactly a difficult ritual. It can't hurt to give it a try, right? If you're still feeling skeptical, just ask around. There are a lot of very compelling stories going around these days. Really? Well, come on! Let's go ask around right now, shall- Well, if it really is true, then just think of all the Mora Paimon could- Oh, and you'd finally be reunited with your twin, too! <laughs> It seems like there really are a lot of people talking about this kind of stuff. <gasps> hey, see those two? Paimon remembers them from the AI Publishing House. One's an editor and the other's an author. Grasp the thought in mind. Clear like... Uh, clear like the light of the moon. As close as kin with you. No, thou. Wait, thee? Uh, hear my summons, right? <laughs> No, no, it's not hear my summons, it's heed my summons. Heed! <sighs> You're never going to get it down at this rate. Hey, what are you guys up to? Whoa! Sheesh, you scared me! Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, where did I leave off with the incantation again? Incantation? Are you guys trying out this new wishing ritual stuff too? Junkichi is trying it out to be specific. He's hit a bit of a creativity block recently, so... <sighs> I'm helping him make a wish so that he can move past it. I mean, I obviously don't, but Junkichi never listens to an outside opinion, so all I can do is go along with it. Mr. Shigeru, can you please be a little more accommodating? This is extremely important to me. People have had all kinds of wishes come true. Become more attractive, get rich quick, ace their studies. I'm just a poor, struggling writer looking to get over a creative hurdle. Is that so much to ask? <sighs> anyway, I just know this is going to work. I have a gut feeling about it. Didn't you say the same thing when you went to make your wish at the Grand Narukami Shrine? Oh, I just know this is gonna work. I have a gut feeling about it. The omamori from the shrine take too long to have any effect on your luck. <sighs> Alright, enough of that. Help me get this incantation down. My new book depends on it. <sighs> Look, to be completely honest, I think you need to sit down and have a good think about what kind of story you want to write. Where's all that self-confidence you had when you first started out? Look at you now. Trying dubious methods from any old light novel. Wait, wait, wait. What? This wishing ritual comes from a light novel? Yep. It's from the one called A First Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits. No, it's most likely a self-published title. It just appeared out of nowhere and took Inazuma by storm. As a fellow writer, I'll refrain from passing comment on how well the story is written, but everyone is saying the wishing incantations it contains are the real deal. Look, Junkichi, yes, everyone's saying it's real, it works, but that's only half the story. I've also heard lots of people saying that everyone who's had their wish granted using this method starts behaving strangely. What's so surprising about that? They're probably just giddy with joy at having their wish come true. To sound a little suspicious. Why don't we go to the Grand Narukami Shrine and ask Yai Miko about it? She's the expert when it comes to both light novels and the supernatural. Well, hello there, young ones. What brings you to the shrine? It just so happens that I have a wonderful novel here. I highly recommend it. Oh? Well, what did you want to ask? Well, we were just... Uh, actually...
actually, you look kind of busy. Is this a bad time? <laughs> no, not at all. It's nothing major. Lady Guji, what do you mean, nothing major? I'm begging you, you've got to help me save my brother. It really is nothing major, I stand by that. Oh, but since you're so curious, let's have him relate the story one more time, just for you. You two seem to have a good relationship with Guji Ai. Please, put in a good word for me. You have to convince her to help my brother. Here's what happened. My name is Kato Yohei, and my brother is Kato Shingo. All he's ever wanted is to become a swordmaster, so he once asked Sensei Domon of the Make Yoshisui art to take him on as a disciple. Domon turned him away, took one look at him and said he didn't have what it takes to train in the art of the sword. But my brother wasn't about to resign himself to defeat. He trained every day as hard as he could, and finally proved himself by defeating one of Domon's best disciples in a duel recently. But since his victory, he's been acting extremely strange. It's like he's become a completely different person. The doctors can't find anything wrong with him, so I'm betting it must be the work of an evil spirit. That's why I'm here, begging for Guji Yai's help. <laughs> you know, there really aren't as many evil spirits lurking around as you seem to think. Your brother achieved the goal he'd been striving toward for as long as he can remember, and now it's gone. It's only natural that he feels a little empty and lost while he's trying to find a new direction. If it were me, I'd just leave him be for a couple of days. He'll recover on his own soon enough. No, Lady Guji. If you saw him for yourself, you'd know. I guarantee you, he's not acting like someone who feels empty and lost. Oh, all right, all right. Then tell me. When did your brother spar with Domon's disciple? About... five days ago. Hmm. Five days ago, you say? Yes, Lady Guji. That's a long time for him to be acting up like this. I'm really worried about him. Our greatest wish is to one day found our own school, just like Domon. We can't jeopardize that dream now. Wait a minute. Now I'm a little confused. Are you here to save your brother, or are you here to make your dreams of founding a martial arts school come true? Uh, well, they're kind of two sides of the same coin, aren't they? Hmm? Whatever. Let me ask you this. Have you heard of any interesting new rumors lately? If so, I'd love to hear about them. What? Rumors? I... I haven't heard anything. Oh dear. Well, that's too bad. Lady Guji, please stop changing the subject. This is someone's life we're talking about here. Please, you've got to help me. Miko, he seems really desperate. This thing with his brother sounds really bad. Come on, you should help him. Okay, fine. Then it's decided. Yay, Miko! So you're gonna help him? Kato, whatever your name was, these two guests are trusted acquaintances of mine. And in fact, they are experts in resolving all manner of strange and supernatural phenomena. Exorcisms and that sort of thing are all in a day's work for them. Yeah! Um, r really? Is that hesitation that I detect in your voice? So, let me get this straight. You come begging to me for help, I actually recommend someone for the job, then suddenly you start doubting me? Not at all, never. Uh, whatever Lady Guji says, I trust wholeheartedly. Thank you two for your willingness to help. Please follow me. Miko, we may be a lot of things, but we ain't exorcists! <laughs> Don't worry. If he wants an exorcism, just grab a handful of salt and mutter some mumbo jumbo while you're sprinkling it around. It's a common trope in light novels, right? You just have to have a bit of bravado. As soon as the protagonist gains self confidence, everything else just magically falls into place. Well, you were the ones who seemed concerned about his situation. Don't you think it would be a little unfair to make me do all the work? Besides, we both know you wouldn't be here at the Grand Narukami Shrine unless you had a request for me too. This is an opportunity to demonstrate that you come in good faith. <sighs> this feels all wrong, but you technically have a point. All right, let's go. Don't worry now, I'll be coming along too. Okay, let's follow Yohei and go visit his brother. What is going on here? Granted, you can never be quite... Hey! Boom! 
Everyone hold hands! Feel my blades! Strange. My brother's been meditating here pretty much constantly over the past few days, but now he's gone. Meditating? Yeah, it's something that he suddenly started doing after defeating Domon's disciple. He just sits there alone, talking to himself. It's pretty disturbing, actually. But that's not important right now. Where the heck could he have gone in his current state? Hmm. This does pose a bit of a problem. If we can't find your brother, well... We can't perform an exorcism with nothing to exercise, can we? Kato, whatever your name was, given the circumstances, why don't you start by going to find your brother, and also picking up a handful of salt on your way? We'll need to use it during the exorcism. Okay. Uh, okay, got it. I'm on it. Miko, what about us? Shouldn't we help look for his brother too? <laughs> <laughs> no need. While What's-His-Face is handling that, we'll take a walk around and ask people what they know about the two brothers. Maybe we'll find out some amusing detail. about the Kato brothers. Oh, are you debt collectors? Yohei said to tell you not to worry. He'll be able to pay you back as soon as he has enrolled a few disciples. Huh? Debt collectors? No, no, we're not here for anything like that. But, uh, it sounds like Yohei and Shingo have gotten themselves into a bit of a pickle. Well, yes. I don't think there's any disputing that. Those two don't have an ounce of dedication between them. They just hop between ideas and won't stick to anything. Huh? But Yohei said his brother has always wanted to become a sword master, and even asked Domon to be his sensei. That's true, yes. Shingo begged Domon to take him on, and eventually, he finally relented. But even after convincing a renowned sensei to give him a chance, he was the same as ever, bumming around in class instead of focusing on his training. In the end, Domon had had enough and kicked him out. But Shingo was resentful about it. He blamed Domon for not seeing his potential, and even declared that he would challenge a disciple of Domon to a duel. Wait, what? That's not what we heard. Oh, how interesting. We heard a slightly different version. My brother wasn't about to resign himself to defeat. He trained every day as hard as he could and finally proved himself by defeating one of Domon's best disciples in a duel recently. <laughs> Yohei said that? That Shingo trained hard. That's ridiculous. He just lay there cussing to high heaven all day every day. Some training regimen, that is. Yohei did tell me about Shingo winning the fight, but I took it with a grain of salt. You can ask Kenji at the village entrance more about that. He always has reliable information. Time to lose. Hey there! We've come to ask you about the Kato brothers. Oh. Oh, you mean Shingo and Yohei? Yeah! We heard that Shingo defeated an apprentice of Domon's recently. Is that true? <laughs> yes, it's true. Oh, wait, so are you here because you heard they're starting their own school and you're looking to sign up? We're not here to sign up, but we would like to hear more details about the fight. Well, you've come to the right person. I actually went to watch it. I thought it was a joke when I first heard that Shingo was going to challenge a disciple of the Meikyo Shisui art. But when he drew his sword, oh, he became a whole different person. The way he handled his blade, it was like flowing water, mesmerizing to watch. Domon's disciple is no pushover, but he was absolutely no match for Shingo. Is Shingo really that strong? Yep, he seemed pretty euphoric after winning the duel too. He was celebrating very vocally, saying something like, What a duel. I haven't felt this good in a long time. <laughs> Any other details to share? 
We've heard that Shingo has been behaving rather out of character since then. Hmm. I'd definitely say that he has more energy than he used to. In the past, he never used to do much except lie around sunbathing all day. But just yesterday, for example, I saw him cutting down trees for the village head. In the space of one afternoon, he did what most people couldn't finish in three days. Not only that, but he managed to fell a lavender melon tree with just one kick. Uh. Hmm. Quite impressive. Things got weird after that, though. The village head brought out some tofu for him, and he just flipped out. He shouted, What is that stuff? Keep that away from me! And then ran off. Lady Guji, esteemed exorcists, finally I found you. I found my brother. He's at the waterfall, and I've got the salt you asked for, too. Come on, let's go! Oh, as much as I'd prefer to stay and hear some more delicious details, I suppose we'd better be going now that he has been found. Leave no stone unturned. No time to lose. No time to lose. Look. Look over there. That's him at the waterfall. So this is Yohei's brother. Whoa. He's meditating while sitting in a waterfall. That's pretty wild. Hey, listen! He's talking to himself. Uh, uh. Woo! <laughs> How's that? <laughs> can you feel it? Uh, can you feel the feeling of manliness? Found your own school. <laughs> so shallow. How can a manly man? Aspire to something so lame. Uh, please spare me, spare me. I I can't feel the manliness. I can't even feel the cold anymore. I I can't take any more. I'm gonna die. Yohei, Yohei, S save me, save me. Did you hear that? All the nonsense aside, he's going for help! Huh? Who... Who goes there? He stood up! And now he's coming this way! No! Don't come any closer! Help! What do we do? Miko, think of something! Oh, poor thing. Yohei, your brother's life is hanging in the balance, and he's using his final breaths to call on you for help. Whatever shall we do? Uh, I... Well, how should I know? The way it looks to me is that Shingo feels terribly resentful to you about something. Would you mind telling me what that's all about? I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. You don't know? But surely you should have more insight than anyone else into how your brother came to be- Yohei, I suggest you think very carefully before you open your mouth again. This is a life-or-death situation. Uh... um... Uh, uh, um, your brother is your closest relative. You must have noticed straight away when he started acting out of character. And yet, five whole days pass before it occurs to you to come and seek help from me. You really expect me not to notice the gaping holes in your story? But, uh, I... As you wish. It's fine by me if you don't want to tell the truth. But after Shingo dies, you'll be next. It's futile trying to escape. Anywhere in the world you run to, it will be right behind your back. After all, 
You did summon it together. Ah! All right, I'll talk, I'll talk, I'll tell you everything. My brother and I used a wishing incantation. We made a wish. Yes, yes, that's it. The one that's all the rage right now. You just have to recite an incantation at midnight and your wish will be granted. Just like the book described, we drew the magic symbol, stepped inside it barefoot at midnight, said the incantation, and lo and behold, spheres of light appeared all around us. After my brother wished to become a swordmaster, it really worked. Out of nowhere, he suddenly had these amazing sword skills. But his whole personality changed too. Because... I was worried that if he goes back to normal, he'll lose his skills with the sword. If that happens, it'd ruin our plans to start a martial arts school, and we'd be back to being poor. I just wanted to keep this under wraps until we'd managed to get the dojo set up and paid off our debts. So then, why'd you go to the Grand Narukami Shrine? Well, because with the way he's acting now, I was worried that rumors might start spreading that he's gotten involved in the occult arts or something, and then no one would want to sign up as his disciple. So I was thinking that maybe Lady Guji might have a way to get my brother back to normal, but let him keep his sword skills? My, look at you with your ingenious schemes. Stop deluding yourself. These newfound sword skills are not his. They belong to the spirit that has possessed him. You're right, you're right. We were wrong to do what we did. We had this coming. All right, then. Your turn now, my little friend. Toss the salt, and then draw your sword. See that? That's what you summoned. And look, now that Shingo's no use, it's coming straight for you. Save me! Save me! Uh, Miko! He fainted! What do we do now? We do nothing. But you, little one. Just a quick fight and this will all be over. <laughs> Who's this? Ah, a fellow swordmaster. Come on. Fight me! He's coming! Be careful! Leave it all to me. I see everything! Shouldn't let your guard down! The Temple of Wisdom! Committed to memory! Cut to the chase! <laughs> that was great! Excellent! Woo! What a rush! I haven't felt this great in a long, long time. Talk about it later. They're about to wake up. <coughs> what am I doing here? Yohei? Yohei, is that you? Shingo, are you all right? Yohei, I had the weirdest dream. I dreamed that I wasn't a useless loser with a sword anymore. I even beat one of Dolmon's disciples. I thought we could finally open a dojo of our own now. But then I realized I couldn't control my own body. And there was this voice in my ear talking to me constantly. I was terrified, and I wanted to take control of my body back, but I couldn't. And the voice kept talking about manliness. Shingo, we shouldn't have made that wish. We summoned a spirit, and it possessed you. Yes, and had we not come to your rescue, your life would have been over before too much longer. Then the spirit would have haunted your brother until he died of fatigue, too. Thank you, Lady Guji, and thank you for your assistance, exorcism experts. All right, take him to get some rest. He's very weak right now, having been possessed for quite a few days. He will experience a high fever, but it won't be fatal. 
Remember, this is the price you pay. At this point, I would normally lecture you on the dire consequences of using occult methods to obtain power that does not belong to you. But I think you get the picture now, don't you? Yes, we understand now. We won't do it ever again. Thank you, Lady Guji. Thank you, exorcists. We'll be on our way then. Come on, Shingo. Miko, would they really have lost their lives if we hadn't gotten involved? And if so, why the heck were you so reluctant to help out? Oh, they would have been fine. I had to scare them a little, though. Otherwise, I hardly think these two lazy rascals would have learned their lesson. So, what was it that possessed Shingo? You saw it all for yourselves. I'm sure you can figure out what kind of spirit had possessed him, can't you? Ah! Paimon's got it! It was an Oni. Correct. Although it possessed Shingo, it didn't have any ill intentions. As a matter of fact, it actually seemed like it was trying to train Shingo to become bolder. Huh. Fair enough. But it seems like it had the opposite effect. Tossing salt caused it to temporarily leave Shingo's body. Then, you exhausted its strength by fighting it, so it disappeared. Even if we'd done nothing at all, Shingo would have eventually become too weak for his body to host the spirit, and it would have left of its own accord. Of course, it would have been more stressful for Shingo and Yohei that way. <laughs> Still, the experience may ultimately have been more effective than me scaring them into submission with a little exaggeration. Well, the main thing is that nobody got hurt. All right, seems like we've wrapped up everything here. Come on, off we go. Hold on, Miko. You say everything's wrapped up, but are you sure about that? Hmm? You mean you disagree? Oh, you mean that they got the incantation from that book. Yes, I know the one. Actually, that book's the whole reason we came looking for you at the shrine today. Incantations seem really popular right now. Human beings don't have powers like us yokai. It's quite understandable for them to be interested in incantations to summon the supernatural. That's not the point! The problem is that the incantations in the book are actually capable of summoning spirits and stuff! And loads of people are trying it! <sighs> Even then, humans only have so much strength. Even if they do successfully summon a spirit with the incantation, it won't stay with them for very long. I really wouldn't fret about it. But who wrote this book? And why? Don't we think there might be a bigger safety risk here? What do you think, Traveler? Yeah, Yohei and Shingo may have been fine in the end, but things got pretty scary when Shingo was possessed. <sighs> Lady Yai, I finally found you. Kuroda, what are you doing here? I'm here to report on Yai Publishing House's sales for the last month. All the numbers are here. Please, take a look. Let me see. What? We're losing market share? Yes. Overall bestseller, reader's favorite, and trending ranking. We're being beaten in all categories. One book is topping the charts. It's called A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits. Both of you! Back here now! Miko? What is it? You have a really scary look on your face right now. <sighs> Things just got serious. A first-hand guide to summoning spirits is an all-round hit, summarily beating the novels of the Yai Publishing House by every analysis. Just what is that supposed to mean? I worked extremely hard to promote our latest featured work, and now a rival book comes out of nowhere and steals our thunder. If this isn't the very definition of intolerable, I don't know what is. I have to come up with a counter plan, and you are going to help me. Huh? How is this our problem all of a sudden? 
Paimon, please. Who wrote this book and why? Don't we think there might be a bigger safety risk here? Oh, am I to take it that the safety of the people of Inazuma isn't so important in your eyes after all? Wait, what, uh, what just happened? Uh, uh, again, you technically have a point, but this feels all wrong. Nothing's wrong, okay? Come on, we're going to war. I'm going to head back and make some preparations. Meet me outside the Yai Publishing House. So what's your plan of action to deal with this rival book? Hmm, why don't you take a guess? I'll give you a hint. It's to do with the Yai Publishing House. Hmm. Oh, Paimon knows! Combine the reputation of the Yai Publishing House with the status of Guji Yai and tell everyone that the incantations in that book are dangerous! Oh, wow! Your first guess, and you got it absolutely wrong. Yeah! Oh, uh, wait! Seriously? That wasn't it? A first-hand guide to summoning spirits is the hottest light novel right now. If we did as you suggested, we would effectively be advertising to everyone that the incantations are real. In bending over backwards trying to warn everyone about the dangers, all we would accomplish is to create more curious readers ready to try them out. Also, sales for the book would only increase further. Okay, yeah, that would be pretty catastrophic. Hmm. Oh, how about we confiscate all the copies? <sighs> Leaving aside the issue of the enormous manpower and resources such an operation would require, Going to such lengths over a light novel would be extremely disruptive to the lives of Inazumans. But that means there's nothing we can do. Well, I've been thinking. I've read a first-hand guide to summoning spirits. It has many other good qualities besides the incantations alone. The book contains many ancient kaiden, or tales of the supernatural, and is written in a very engaging way. That is why the book has become so popular. Hmm... I think we're going to have a difficult time trying to rein in its popularity while it's the only work in its league on the market. That's right. How do you get rid of the next big thing? You replace it with the next next big thing. So what we're going to do is create Inazuma's newest hit novel. Smash our rival's sales numbers and win our readers back. That is how Yaimiko wages war. Incidentally, this will also be the best way to combat the influence of a first-hand guide to summoning spirits. Wait, Miko. So you want us to write a novel? <laughs> well, becoming an accomplished novelist certainly isn't an overnight process. But let's not forget that I am the chief editor of the Yai Publishing House. I have my ways. I did say this is what we're going to do. I trust that the word teamwork is in your vocabulary. Anyway, there is a writer submission event going on at the moment. Start by talking to readers and finding out what they're into. When you have an idea of what the current trends are, come back and see me. I'll be at Uyu Restaurant. Find me there when you're done. I will assemble a team, and we can work while we eat. Everything is going smoothly. 
The key to a successful light novel is having good illustrations. When to use illustrations, what they should contain, and which artists you should commission for them. These are all key things to bear in mind. Good illustrations can make up for bad writing. But on the flip side, a bad illustration can ruin your novel, even if you have the best story in the world. There's a saying that light novels are essentially a case of buy art, get words free. I'd agree with that. Too bad most of the top artists have jam-packed schedules, so it's extremely difficult to commission them. The illustrations in A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits are incredible, but it's unlike any art style I've ever seen before. I'll be honest, I read light novels for the cheap thrills. In most traditional stories, the protagonist usually has this long and drawn-out character arc, usually involving a process of separation, loss, and ultimately growth and renewed strength. It reads well and everything, it's just a little slow-paced for me. By contrast, there's this popular light novel at the moment called A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits, where the protagonist is super strong right from the get-go. That's what I mean by cheap thrills. Action-packed right from page one. The protagonist is a kitsune who has not only mastered the secret art of incantations, but also tea ceremony, painting, and calligraphy. I've been reading light novels for a long time now. I'm mainly into big, ambitious fantasy works with an original core concept and good storytelling. These days, though, everyone seems to be imitating each other. Most of the time, I can guess what the story is about just from the title. The only recent book worth mentioning is A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits. Not only is it a good story, but the descriptions are really true to life. So much so that I'm almost wondering if maybe the author really has met all those yokai before. There's much more to light novels than Paimon realized! <sighs> Let's go tell our findings to Yai Niko. Ah, there you are. Let me introduce the team. You've already met Junkichi and Shigeru. Shigeru is an experienced editor, and Junkichi is the author he's partnered with. Junkichi's working through a creative lull at the moment, but all his past works have been very popular with young people. He's developed a distinct and enduringly popular style. Satomi is Yai Publishing House's ace in the hole. Her specialty is that she can write all kinds of completely different stories and all under different pen names. As for what those names are, well, <laughs> that's a trade secret. They will be teaming up with us to collectively create the novel that knocks a first-hand guide to summoning spirits off its perch. So, feeling better about my plan now? Uh-huh. It definitely makes sense. <laughs> now then, tell me what you found out about readers' preferences. Hmm, all very true. An original core concept, a fast pace, quality illustrations, and lots of action. This is the formula that will guarantee good sales numbers. More importantly than that, even though it's a work of fiction, we have to deliver a sense of realism. Paimon followed pretty much all of that, but there's still one question. What are we actually going to write about? For example, we know we need an original core concept, but how do we come up with one? <laughs> Before you can answer that question, you have to understand your target audience. Take A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits, for example. When I read it, all I find is common knowledge to the kitsune, but to the general public, it's bursting with new and interesting ideas. It all comes down to the size of the information gap between author and reader. As a traveler, 
There must be a great many things you know that are complete unknowns to the people of Inazuma. What is commonplace to you may be fresh and original to them. Oh, right! So maybe we can take inspiration from our time in Mondstadt and Lilith! Hmm, but that would make it a completely different genre than a first-hand guide to summoning spirits. Uh, is that going to be a problem? Not at all. You don't have to worry so much about how to compete with that book. All you have to do is provide some interesting ideas based on your travel experiences. As long as the core content is interesting, my expert team here will be able to flesh out the details. Alright, let's start with chapter one then. Uh, what are you thinking? go for that, no matter how you tried to play it. Hmm. Out of a maximum of ten points, I'd give that a nine. Is there really flying emergency food in other worlds? How does it taste? And how do you cook it? It's a strong opening. An easy way to grab the reader's attention. Never underestimate the appeal of culinary-oriented subject matter. Food, after all, is a topic that everyone is interested in. Hmm, good job, little one. You're not only drawing on your own experiences, but it seems you're filtering them through the lens of the kinds of light novels you've read in the past. I think you really understand what we're trying to do here. Thoughts from the experts? Are we able to work with this general framework to make an interesting story? Yeah, we think it works. I tend to overcomplicate the core concept if I'm not careful, so this deals with that problem. <laughs> That's good. Okay, we're done with Chapter 1. Let's move on to Chapter 2. Huh? Won't that do for- Readers will devour your content a lot more quickly than you'd think. If we don't keep delivering the goods now we've caught their attention, all our hard work so far is in vain. Hurry, Chapter 2. Let's go. Can't you see that Satomi is waiting? Huh? What's wrong with you? You don't look so good. Hmm, what a pity. I thought your beginner's luck would carry you a little further before it came to this. But alas, the time has come prematurely. Before it came to what? What's happened? The bane of our existence. Writer's block. It's your arch nemesis for life, appearing without warning and inflicting a pain worse than death upon the writer. They sell their souls just to get their muse back. Sounds when this happens, the best thing you can do is have a bite to eat and take a proper break. <clears throat> uh, boss, get me a plate of fried tofu and get some kushikatsu for these two. Just the basic kind will do. Don't worry, this is my treat. Your treat? Oh, wait a minute. Miko, we'll be getting paid for all the hard work we're doing, right? Of course. Everyone that takes part in the creative process will be paid. All right, cool. Then let's press on, shall we? Don't give up now. For the sake of our paycheck, get your brain going! Ooh, ooh! Does this mean your inspirations come back? Let's see now. The protagonist arrives in Liyue and befriends a young man who doesn't have the money to pay for anything. Only later do we find out that this young man is none other than Rex Lapis himself. With the help of the Qixing and the protection of the Adepti, I am free to roam this vast realm. Hmm. Is this the kind of cheap thrill that that guy was talking about? Hmm. I give it a 9.8. The story is fun and action-packed with no dark undertones. Also, there are a great many legends about Rex Lapis. I'm sure it will spark the people's curiosity. I, for one, think there's a sizable market for this. Approved. All right, well, let's just hope Zhang Li doesn't mind. Great. Well, now Satomi can get started on that. Leave it to me, Lady Yai. Let's write about Inazuma in the third chapter, shall we? I can help with this one. 
We can use the Vision Hunt Decree or your experience in the Resistance. Any ideas? The strict principal writing of the Inazuma Academy decided to confiscate all light novels. With the help of Lady Kitsune, the protagonist defeats Principal Raiden in an exam before the throne, forcing the principal to abolish the literature hunt decree. Are we absolutely sure we can publish this? We can and we will. I think it's great. One thing, though. We'll need to rewrite the part about me giving you the omamori. Let's change it to... The mysterious Lady Kitsune teaches the protagonist a spell that can make their wishes come true. The protagonist uses this spell to defeat the Raiden Shogun in battle. That should do the trick. Whoa! So we're really going head-to-head -head with our rival on this one, huh? <laughs> I suppose so. Once they're done writing the manuscript, I'll write the passage where the protagonist recites the incantation myself. Are we done then? Do you really think this will be able to beat a first-hand guide to summoning spirits? The content is fine. Now we just need to promote it. I will contact an artist to make some illustrations. I'm positive they will be at least as good as those in A First-Hand Guide to Summoning Spirits. We'll also need an endorsement on a paper band around the book. I can get the wonderful Ms. Hina to write that. She runs a regular Q&A column in That's Life magazine. The people of Inazuma absolutely adore her. You're free to take a break while the creative team is doing their work, but please go by the Yai Publishing House at some point to commission Ms. Hina for that recommendation. Once our light novel is complete, let's meet at the writer's submission event. Miss Hina doesn't usually do endorsements, but since it's Lady Guji that's asking, we'll see what we can do. With Miss Hina getting so popular lately, a lot of people have come to us hoping to do a collaboration. But Miss Hina's not interested in any of it. She still prefers to focus all her efforts on replying to readers' letters, and turns down every promotional opportunity she can. Maybe that's why her fans like her so much. <laughs> I, I'm getting off topic here. Anyway, if we can get that endorsement from Miss Hina, you'll definitely get an exposure boost at the beginning. May your light novel sell well and set a new record for the Yai Publishing House. We'll do our best. No time to lose. Are you sure you'd like to submit this entry? Let me see. The Miraculous Adventures of the Traveler by Thousand Hands. What a strange pen name. Definitely your doing. Having been around you so much recently, Paimon's slowly starting to understand your unique tastes. What do you mean, strange? It took a lot of work by a lot of different people to get this thing finished. Don't you think it's a very descriptive pen name? We'll get this printed as a matter of priority, and conduct trial sales in pilot locations throughout Inazuma. I'll announce the sales numbers in three days. Uh-oh. Paimon's getting a little nervous now. Do you really think this is gonna work? That's right. Be confident in your work. That's exactly how a light novelist should be. Okay, then I'll sign you up. Please come back in three days for the results. Thank you all for your submission. I wish you the very best of luck.
Uh, Taki Ito? Yeah, I've heard of the guy. Word is, he did something monumentally stupid, then ran off before they could catch him. And to be completely honest, I was a little surprised when I first heard it. Okay, well, I mean, not that surprised. Wait, you mean he already had a bad reputation? No, not exactly. <coughs> He's just very overbearing in everything he does. Big and brash and always making a ruckus. So, on the one hand, he's a larger-than-life kind of guy. But on the other hand, he's emotionally volatile. When he's in a good mood, he's as high as a kite. But when he gets upset, he gets completely enraged. I don't personally see him as a bad guy. But I guess I wouldn't put it past him to get all riled up and lose control. Hmm. You know, I'm afraid that I'm not too sure myself. <coughs> I keep a pretty good eye on what's happening in the city, and as far as I can tell, he just idles the days away. When someone asks for it, he's willing to lend a helping hand, but other than that, he's just out making a scene with the kids on the street or his gang. <sighs> if I had to guess, his lack of income finally drove him to do something more drastic to make ends meet. Is it just Paimon, or is this Ito fellow starting to sound pretty weird? I'm afraid that I don't have much else to tell you. He tends to spend his time with people a little more lively than myself. Perhaps you could try asking around some more. Okay, thanks! Yeah. Arataki Ito? Hmm, oh yeah. I heard about that whole thing. I'm sure it must have been a mix-up on the Tenryo Commission's end. He could never do anything so dastardly. Huh? Sure. Is he really as trustworthy as all that? <laughs> no, perhaps you misunderstand me. When I said he could never do anything dastardly, I meant he literally doesn't have what it takes. Mm, maybe a story will explain it better. So, he used to spend a lot of time playing rock, paper, scissors and hide and seek with the kids on the streets. Kids, being kids, aren't exactly the most difficult to outsmart. I'm sure you can see what I'm getting at here. He used to lose all the time, sometimes catastrophically. <laughs> On purpose though, right? No, not at all. The one time I saw him win, he started jumping around and yelling, I won! I finally won! I'm unbeatable! And so on. Then he took the kid's candy as his prize and ate it right there in front of him. Ugh, that's just plain wrong. He did take it way too far that time. The poor kid started crying, so I stepped in and gave Ito a scolding. He was pretty quick to admit that he was fully in the wrong, and it wasn't long before the kid had stopped crying and was laughing and playing again as if nothing had ever happened. In fact, the children quite like playing with him because he's always serious about the stakes and never throws a game on purpose. So, I suppose what I'm trying to say is, is a guy who can't even beat kids at a children's game really going to be capable of these kinds of diabolical deeds? Huh. He doesn't sound like a bad guy at all. In fact, he kind of sounds like a man of integrity. Yes, my thoughts exactly. Still, the Tenryo Commission's evidence against him is supposed to be irrefutable. So, I'm not trying to condone his actions or anything. If he really has messed up big time, then he should face the consequences just like anyone else. Thanks for the info! We'll keep asking around! Arataki Ito. <laughs> of course I know him. We've been trying to apprehend him recently. We know he's already left Inazuma City, but with no clues to follow, we have no choice but to commission others for help, including the Adventurer's Guild. Catherine says that Arataki Ito hasn't done anything seriously bad before, so it seems pretty strange. Paimon's curious. Is there any evidence of all this stuff he's accused of? Yes, of course. Otherwise, we'd never have put so many people on the case. For starters, most thieves will try to devise a way to conceal their identity, but for an Oni, the horns are a dead giveaway. I mean, the whole city could have recognized it was him. At first, he was just one of our suspects, but when we went to investigate, he personally confessed to everything and started trying to provoke the officers. 
What's most frustrating is that he then managed to escape along with his entire gang. He must have been planning the whole thing right from the start. Of course he did. Whether material or psychological, there is plenty of evidence either way. He's never had a mora to his name his entire life, and he's never kept down a real job. Word is that he also takes care of someone in his gang, and that the burden of it takes quite the toll on him. After scrounging for a living all these years, maybe he thought that being the bad guy would be an easier ride. As for his psychological motives, it's a bit embarrassing to talk about, but we... <clears throat> confiscated his vision during the Vision Hunt Decree. At the time, Arataki Ito put up quite a fight. It took a huge amount of manpower and resources, and in the end we had to enlist the help of Kujo Sara to finally secure his vision. The Vision Hunt was a mistake, but we never expected that he would go to such extreme lengths to take revenge on us. He does sound a little unstable. Just like people have been saying. If the two of you are able to capture Arataki Ito, please bring him straight here. We'll handle him from there. Thanks for all the info. Hmm. Too bad we still don't know where he could have run off to. We already got word on the street, so maybe it's time to talk to a real specialist. Haina remembers that there's a detective agency here in Inazuma. Maybe we can try asking there. Hello. We'd like to ask some questions about Arataki Ito. Oh, him again. Sure. I have answers. We've already done some investigating for the Tenryo Commission. But first... Do you have enough Moro to cover the fee? I've heard all about your travels. After everything you've been through, I'm sure you understand the way these sorts of things work. Uh, how much Moro are we talking about here? A one-off payment of 397,000 Moro, up front. Plus a further 5% of your Adventures Guild remuneration as my commission, if Arataki Ito is successfully caught and brought to justice. Whoa, that's crazy expensive! How did you even come up with the price that high? <laughs> Hold on. I wasn't finished. It just so happens the initial fee has already been paid in full by the Tenryo Commission. All you'll need to pay is the small commission fee. And, as for that amount, I'll settle things with the Adventures Guild once we have Ito. So, from the way I see it, you guys are getting a pretty nice deal. Now then, to give you the full picture in this case, we must first recount a well-known Inazuman fairy tale. A long, long time ago, in a village lost to time, there lived a crimson oni and a blue oni. They were the best of friends. The crimson oni looked fierce, but was gentle like the humans. The blue oni looked human, but was reclusive, like an oni. The crimson oni wished to befriend the humans, but they were scared and threw beans at him whenever he came near. <laughs> so the blue Oni said to the crimson Oni, Akka, I'll cause trouble in the village. You'll come and stop me. Then the humans will accept you. As planned, the crimson Oni chased the blue Oni away. The crimson Oni's deeds spread throughout the land, and people finally accepted him. But when the Crimson Oni went to tell the Blue Oni the good news, he was gone and left only a letter behind. I went traveling. Don't come find me or they'll treat you as a naughty little Oni. But don't worry about me. No matter where I go, we'll always be friends. I suppose the blue oni simply disappeared, never to be seen again. Only the crimson oni remain now. Mm. Oh, but, but, the blue oni... Of course it does. Otherwise, I wouldn't go through all the trouble of telling it. One interpretation is that the story is actually broadly based on historical events and that Arataki Ito is, in fact, a descendant of the crimson oni. 
What I'm trying to tell you is that the Oni have sacrificed a lot in the past in order to finally integrate themselves into human society. But there are still some volatile personality traits in the Oni bloodline. Every generation of Oni inherits these traits. So while Arataki Ito has never been known to commit a wrongful act in the past, can we ever completely rule out the possibility of him one day allowing this side of him to take over? Like, how could he do that? After the Blue Oni's sacrifice? That would be such a betrayal! That's a very old story. Nobody knows how long it's been since the Blue Oni disappeared. We can only assume that they have long since died out, in which case, it would be quite a stretch to say it still counts as a betrayal at this point. Besides, the suspect has already confessed. What is there left to discuss? According to my investigation, he was headed southwest. I would bet he's already made it to Yashiori Island by now. The Tenryo Commission is unable to enter territory controlled by Songonomia troops. No doubt that's the reason Arataki Ito chose to flee in that direction. Don't mention it. I'm just doing my duty. Wait! Paimon still has a question! If Arataki Ito has given in to his bad side, won't that mean he's extra mean and violent now? I could only assume so. Judging from his previous bouts, he is a skilled fighter with a lot of brute strength. Whether or not you'll be able to handle him, that I do not know. Okay, but what's up with people throwing beans at Oni? What use is that? Ah, yes. Now that you mention it, I seem to recall that Arataki Ito is allergic to beans. In fact, all Oni will avoid beans, but especially Ito. I heard that just touching a bean is enough to incapacitate him. If you could weaken him a bit by triggering his allergies, perhaps you'd have better luck subduing him. Right! Knowing our target's weakness will make things a whole lot easier! It just so happens that I have a bag of beans right here. I was planning to use them to make some porridge, but I think you will find a better use for them. Of course, I will charge the Adventurer's Guild a fair and reasonable rate for the beans. Sneaky! But also, thanks! Let's head to Yashiori Island and start looking for Ito! this way. Perfect. Let's try the beans Detective Sango gave us. It'll save a lot of hassle if we can avoid a fight.
Uh, d d don't don't be alarmed. It's just my uh, uh my allergies acting up. I've got it under control. It's all right. I got this. I just 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 gotta tough it out. <laughs> just, I just I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I gotta catch my breath here. Whatever it is you want, it's gonna have to wait. I need a moment. <sighs> Need a moment. <sighs> hey, why'd you have to be so mean, huh? Surprise attacking me like that. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 take it easy. Just, just stop with the beans, okay? So you're here to bring me in. How in the world did you find me all the way out here anyway? <laughs> well, whatever. If you think I'm going back with you, you can forget it. I'd walk away if I were you. I pack a mean punch, you know. I don't want to hurt any regular folks like you. That's pretty big cat considering all the beans we have. Yep, that's right. Me. All by myself. Nobody else. As boss of the Arataki gang, I gotta nab a little food and drink when we're running low. That's only natural, right? Yeah, but nabbing people? That's taking it a bit far, don't you think? Uh, not when their families will pay good mora to see them again. Easy pickings. And the extra mora means I can, uh, uh, give some to my gang to spend on themselves. <laughs> hey, what's with all the questions? Like I said, I'm not going back with you, so stop wasting everybody's time. No way, mister. We've accepted a commission to bring you back. What did you say, little one? Go on. Say it to my face. Uh, well, mostly she took a commission to bring you back. Looks like you aren't gonna let this drop. In that case, we... Uncle Ito! Don't run now. Careful or you'll fall. What's taking you so long? You said we were gonna have a beetle fight today. Come on, you promised. Uh, y yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Still going ahead. But y but you see, uh, I I've been out here for ages, and I still can't find a beetle that I like. So, just give Uncle Ito a little more time, okay? Huh? Who are they? Are they your friends? Uh, yeah, that's right. I told them not to come, but what can I say? They were just too worried about me. <laughs> it's because of a little thing called, uh, prestige. Yeah, because of all the prestige Uncle Ito has. Huh? What are you talking about? Come on, just play along. Leave the kid out of this. Uh, Uncle Ito, you don't look so good. You look like you're about to fall over. <laughs> That's because Uncle Ito bumped his noggin on a tree branch while looking for a beetle. Uh-oh. <laughs> It's all good, though. These horns are rock solid. Okay, if you say so. Granny and I will keep heading back now. Don't be too long. Uh, yep, I'll be right there. Hope you're ready to lose today. Who were those people? The old lady was Granny Oni. She's the one who took me in and raised me. And the kid's name is Daisuke. I, I took him in just a while back. They're both like family to me. They escaped with me out this way, along with my boys from the Arataki gang. If I didn't bring him with me, the Tenryo Commission would be knocking on their doors for sure. Right. But if you care about them so much, then you shouldn't have done all that stuff that made them worry about you in the first place. I... Uh, uh, listen, how about we make a deal? You two let me go wrap things up with Daisuke, and once we're done battling Beatles, the two of us will settle things with a duel. If you win, I'll come quietly. You can take me back to Inazuma City, and you won't hear a peep out of me. Why? Because I'm an Oni of my word. I'll just tell little Daisuke that my friends and I need to step outside for a moment. That way you won't worry. Cool? Hmm. What should we do? There it oh, it's on! I like your style. <laughs> All right, but first things first. I need to find an Oni Kabuto to battle with. Come with me. Saves you worrying that I might skedaddle. What kind of 
the game is beetle fighting. You guys have seen Oni Kabuto out in the wild, right? Even though they might look menacing on the outside, they're big softies on the inside. Most of the time, they're just sitting there doing nothing. But let me tell ya, once the Oni Kabuto start fighting, ho ho ho, they won't let anything get in their way. The grand game of beetle fighting is a match where your beetle tries to flip the other beetle onto its back. Hey, it's not just some kid's game, okay? There's way more to it than that. I have taken part in more beetle fights than you would believe. At least 800. I may have even crossed the thousand mark by this point. Anyway, after a while, you can tell a beetle's fighting potential just by looking at its shape, size, and the patterns on its body. But it's not just about all the physical stuff. Oh no, your Oni Kabuto's gotta be in the right head space as well. If it's not up for a fight or doesn't have the guts, well, then it's game over. <laughs> Boy, are you too lucky you ran into me. When it comes to beetles, I'm the expert that the experts go to. I'll show you all you need to know. But we're not the ones that will be playing. We're just here to keep an eye on you. Oh, yeah, anyway, not a problem. You two might think I'm just tooting my own horns here, but just you wait. I'll make you a beetle expert in no time. And by the way, that kid has one tough beetle. We can't underestimate it. You have to find a real lean, mean beetle warrior. Okay, so he's not the sharpest horn on the Oni. Okay, let me see. Ah, there. Let's head to that hill. I'll bet my bottom mora we're gonna find some major league Oni Kabuto hiding out there. Uh oh, lightning storm! Ah, just our luck. Uh, oh, darn it, they're all gone. Let's hop down from here and take a look. My gut's telling me that there's a king-size beetle. <gasps> look! You see all those purple things? It's a whole pile of Oni Kabuto! <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about! Huh? Oh, what the... Ah, oh, no! Not lavender melons! <clears throat> well... Even a pro like myself can make a mistake from time to time. It's okay, just gotta roll with the punches. Let's try somewhere else. The one. This is the one. <laughs> See, as long as you're in my company, you're guaranteed to find yourself an Oni Kabuto. Yeah, it's on the smaller side, but uh, size isn't everything in a beetle fight. Just let the expert explain, okay? What smaller beetles lack in strength, they make up for in agility. They usually got a whole bunch of sick moves just ready to whip out when the right moment comes. Listen, you can never see a beetle's true energy until it's in the ring. It might look a bit young and docile, but that's got its advantages. Haven't you ever heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Young beetles that have never fought before always go all out in their first fight. <laughs> Older beetles that have already been through the wars tend to just cower in the corner the moment they see a strong opponent. Hey, didn't I say not to worry? Come on, just have a little faith, would ya? My experience is telling me that this Oni Kabuto was spawned to be a champion! If we're gonna battle some beetles, then Paimon wants in! It's not like we have anything else to do. When you hop down, Paimon flew off somewhere else nearby and found this one! What do you think, Ito? It's big and strong and looks like a real fighter! It matches everything you said about a good fighter beetle! But the one you guys found must be way... way... bigger. Oh, uh... <laughs> You got some experience catching beetles, too, huh? Nope. This is the first one Paimon's ever caught. Well, looks like you got a real knack for this. You'll be a fellow beetle fighting expert in no time. Oh, so overall, not that good, then. Uh, anyway, great. With both your beetle and mine, I can tell this will finally be the one. This time, I'm gonna win for sure. Well, uh... <clears throat> you know, that's that's just life, man. There are so many people in this world who are 
talented, uh, passionate, but it's no guarantee that things will go their way. So many unrelated things have to come together at once in just the right way to make victory happen. Uh, there's this word that really sums it up nicely, actually. It's a uh, coincidence. As in pure luck? Huh. Guess it makes no difference whether we have Paimon's beetle or not, then. Might as well just... Uh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's not do anything rash here. <laughs> you know? I think both of these fine beetles have a shot at winning. Let's just hang on to them and give them both a try. A true warrior never leaves a good beetle behind. Anyway, uh, time to head back and get this show started. Man, I am psyched for this. Woo! Let's go! <laughs> No time to lose. Finally! You're back! Can we start our beetle fight now? Yeah, sure thing, buddy. But you better watch out. I brought a real winner back this time. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm not scared of your beetle. Go, go, stripey ghost! I've got this fight in the bag. Let's go, nimble ninja! <laughs> When did you come up with that name? Come on, you can take him, little guy. <laughs> That's right, finish it. My seventh loss in a row. <laughs> Stripey Ghost is invincible. Even Uncle Ito can't beat him. I won't forget this. I'll beat you next time, I swear. All right, Paimon, you're up. Time to give Crimson Cyclone a shot. Maybe it'll end this losing streak of mine. All right, go get him, Crimson Cyclone! Whoa, that one looks ultra strong. But... It's still no match for you, Stripey. <laughs> All right, little guy. Use your Super Paimon Tornado! No. I can't believe it. I lost. Yay! We won! Ha! Paimon knew Crimson Cyclone would be the best! Boy, did that one put up a fight. Woo! It wiped the floor with Stripey Ghost. <laughs> I know a real beetle trainer when I see one. Way to kick some beetle butt, partner. <laughs> see? Paimon's got real talent. Of course, Crimson Cyclone has to take some of the credit, too. Oh, right. Yeah, now that the beetle fighting's over and all. Mm hmm? This is for you, Daisuke. Huh? For me? You're really giving it to me? Go ahead, take it, Daisuke. When we finally get back to the city, you can show it off to all your friends. But will we ever be able to go back? Of course we will. Trust me. I never go back on my word. Anyway, I got some things I gotta discuss with my friends here. Uh, go play with Granny for a while, would ya? <laughs> There's a good boy. Good. The kid doesn't suspect a thing. You're from the Tinryo Commission, aren't you? I bet you're here to capture Uncle Ito. Huh? Hey, didn't I tell you? They're my friends. Uh, in fact, they're they're in the gang. <laughs> We're practically family. That's not true. I already know everyone in your little gang, but I've never seen these two before. Uncle Ito didn't do anything wrong. Don't take him away. And not only did he not do anything wrong, he also saved my life. He's not a bad guy. Hey, uh, some things we don't tell to outsiders, remember? Uh, how should I explain? I'm a real lousy liar. Ito, sometimes you need to just say what you have to say. Uh, don't worry about us. <sighs> I guess. Thanks, Granny. Seems I can't hide it anymore. 
Come with me. I'll explain everything. I'll be honest with you. This thing the Tenryo Commission is investigating, with someone going around taking people and their possessions, it wasn't me. Any of it. I have my own reasons for lying about it, and I really didn't want to get innocent people caught up in this while I'm still trying to solve the real problem here. And the same as you. I just want to avoid conflict at all costs. But it's just not worth it if someone gets hurt. So why in the world would you say that you were the culprit? <sighs> Maybe you don't know because you're outlanders, but it all started a long, long time ago with the story of the Crimson Oni and the Blue Oni. Hold on a second. If you're talking about that fairy tale, we've heard that one already. Oh, so you already know. Well, that makes things a whole lot easier. So, is the story from the fairy tale really- Everything about the fate of the Oni is true. The Blue Oni chose exile, and the Crimson Oni stayed behind. But the other details aren't historically accurate. Fairy tales are nice stories, but there's something they leave out. It's a little thing called the Cold Hard Truth. The Inazuma of long ago was a dangerous place. If you wanted the Raiden Shogun's protection, you had to have a good relationship with the humans. The Oni are a proud kind, so it wasn't easy for them to ask others for acceptance. Over time, the Oni eventually split into two factions. The Crimson Oni were friendly with the humans, but the Blue Oni? They were more stubborn and insisted on keeping to their own. Paimon thought you were two different species. So really, you're all one family? Yep, that's right. There's no real difference between us. We just paint our horns different colors to show which side we belong to. Because humans were still wary of Oni at the time. The Crimson Oni always hoped to find a way to live in peace with the humans, but the Blue Oni kept clashing with them. Humans didn't see a difference between Crimson and Blue Oni. All they knew was that Oni were hard to get along with. If things were to continue that way, the Oni were never going to get along with humans. And so, the most revered leaders of the Crimson and Blue Oni decided to resolve it once and for all. Over drinks, they swore an oath. The Blue Oni would play the role of Evil Oni to help the Crimson Oni integrate into human society. But the Blue Oni's leader gave two conditions. Huh? First, the Oni must abandon any prejudice they held against humanity. Every Oni was to accept humans in their heart before the humans accepted them. Oni were not to use their strength to mistreat humans, but were also not to stand for mistreatment against themselves. Second, the Crimson Oni were to integrate with human society, but not by trying to please the humans. The Oni were to embrace their own honest characters, their surging tempers, and their awesome strength to win respect from the humans. In other words, they were to carry on the Oni bloodline while also protecting our Oni pride. After choosing exile, the number of blue Oni began to dwindle, until eventually, they disappeared altogether. Since I first heard the story of the blue and crimson Oni as a kid, oh, I've heard it countless times in my life. Not once did I ever imagine that the blue Oni clan had actually survived. So you're saying the real culprit was a descendant of the blue Oni? That's right. Most people don't pay attention to the color of an Oni's horns. They probably don't even know that Blue Oni exists. But nothing gets by the Arataki gang. At the scene of the crime, they saw an Oni with different color horns than mine. Still, it'd be strange if the culprit really was a descendant of the Blue Oni. I can't bring myself to accept it. Exactly. They would give up their life before abandoning their pride. I've always respected the Blue Oni for the sacrifice they made. And I know the aspirations my ancestors had for the future of all Oni. Our pride does not allow for any wrongdoing. You don't steal from other people. You don't harm other people, period. My guess is that the Blue Oni was tricked or forced into it somehow. But uh, I don't have any evidence. That's right. If I didn't step in, the Tenryo Commission would have definitely caught them by now. But what does Daisuke have to do with any of this? He said that you saved him so he knows your story, right? He was the one I managed to save from the Ronin after I sent them running from the scene. He was off playing somewhere when they came by and ransacked his house. By the time he came back, his parents had been taken. The whole reason I'm in this is to help this kid find his mom and dad again. I never wanted to tell you any of this. <laughs> my original plan was to knock you both out and take my family to hide somewhere else. There's more to this than just one blue Oni. There's a dangerous group behind everything that's been going on. 
I didn't want to get anyone else caught up in this mess. That's everything. The whole story. If you don't believe me and want to drag me back to Inazuma City, then I'm going to fight you with all I've got. But if you're willing to believe me, then please, give me a little time. Once I find the Blue Oni, I'll turn the both of us in. Yep, Paimon too. Just treat it like we're here to keep an eye on you. So you... <laughs> Uh, all right. Oh, I knew you'd be reasonable. I, I knew it. I was thinking right from the start. These two fine folks, they're just out here in the pursuit of truth and justice, man. <laughs> well, I should tell you, though, things could get a little dangerous, so uh, be ready for anything. <laughs> uh, don't say that I didn't warn you. <laughs> don't worry about us. We're seasoned adventurers. All right. Then our first job is to investigate where this blue oni is hiding out. There's a victim of his that saw him up close, currently taking refuge at Sanganomiya's camp. I figure we can start by talking to him. Yo, you must be Masato. Uh, an Oni? Oh no, not another one! Oh, uh, yeah. Not the one that robbed you, though. So, uh, <laughs> chill. I contacted you before, remember? I need your help. Oh, uh, right. Sorry. I'm still a bit on edge after the incident. <clears throat> so anyway, here's what happened. I was just out transporting some goods when a group of Ronin suddenly attacked me. It's not the first time that's happened to me. Usually, you just hand over some Mora and they'll leave you alone. At least you don't lose your goods that way. But this time was different. They weren't willing to talk things over. Instead, they took my things and they started coming for me! Huh? That's totally un- I got down on my knees and begged. Said I had a family to care for and that my business is our only livelihood. Then I saw that there was an Oni among the group. I thought he was going to be the one to finish me off. But instead... He stopped the others and told them to let me go. Yeah, that got them all arguing with each other. His cohort said that I was sure to retaliate if they released me. But the young Oni was insistent that they shouldn't lay a finger on me. Things got real heated. I thought they were going to come to blows. Luckily, they let me escape with my life in the end. And I scrambled to get myself here, where I'd be safe. <sighs> I never want to set foot outside of here again! So he'll steal, but he won't harm people. Hmm. <laughs> Seems he has some sort of standards. Did he say why they were robbing you? Surely it was Mora, right? What else could they have wanted with me? I mean, I can't say for sure. It's not like I asked. But what I did hear them say was, the goods are worth more than the merchant's life. Or something like that. Ugh, that idiot Oni. Do you have any idea where they went after they robbed you? I have no clue, but I think they're pretty active in the Tatarasuna area. You aren't going to go after them, are you? Seriously, I'd advise against it. There are too many of them, and they're all heavily armed. Ah, don't worry. It's just a bunch of no-name scumbags. I got a whole laundry list of scores to settle with them. If these two islands are where they tend to hang around, we're sure to run into them at Nazuchi Beach sooner or later. No time to lose. No time to lose. 
They gotta pass through here sometime. Let's just hang tight for a while. If I'm not mistaken, they'll be showing up any time. Yeah, things might get a little rough, so we better be prepared. Oh, here they come! Yeah, there they are. And one of them has horns. All right, it's go time. I see everything. Looks like you fellas aren't going down without a fight. Fine by me. Let's fight first, we'll talk later. Speed of light. With sword comes shadow. Let's roll. No stone unturned, as a dutiful maid would. Finally, I... No. To the very end. Hey, don't even think about running. It's me, Arataki Ito, descendant of the Crimson Oni. <laughs> I know who you are. From the day we are born, every blue Oni knows their purpose. We all know our fate is one of self-sacrifice. But what about the Crimson Oni, hmm? You don't know anything about us. Not our miserable history, or any of our names. Mine's Takuya, by the way. But you don't even care, do you? Because those who get sacrificed should be forgotten, right? No, you're wrong. I never knew the blue Oni had survived to this day. And the moment I found out, I was determined that I would find you. Since you remember the pact between our two factions, I assume you also remember the pride we share as Oni. So my question is, how could a proud Oni like yourself go and abuse the weak and plunder the innocent? Why bring- <laughs> Huh? What's- Who are you to talk about pride and oaths with me? The blue Oni gave up everything, just so the crimson Oni could live peacefully in human society. But let me ask you, Arataki Ito, what exactly do you contribute to human society? You're a blundering fool who can't hold down a real job, a laughingstock of the town, and worse still, you let them get your vision during the vision hunt decree. Protecting the Oni pride? Ha! Huh. You wouldn't know how if you tried. You're a disgrace to the Oni kind. Hey, come on. None of that stuff's a big deal. I, I mean, you're... You're really hanging me out to dry here, man. Since when do you care what other people think? You just do whatever you want. It's not like anyone can stop you. But do you have any idea of the kind of life my kin and I have lived while you've been hanging around in human society? We were cut off from the rest of the world. We severed all contact with it. And since then, we've had no place to live. No stable source of food. No clothing. No medicine. Nothing. Besides the oath we swore to uphold in our so-called Oni pride, we had nothing. So, that's why you joined a band of thieves? That's right. Why should I accept that life? Is holding fast to a worthless oath supposed to help me provide for my family and friends? I've abandoned our Oni pride. It's meaningless. I want to live. I've given everything that I've stolen from humans to my community. What I've taken will at least keep them from starving and ease their pain. That's what matters most to me. Yeah! And besides, the Blue Oni sacrificed themselves so that Oni could be accepted as part of human society. If people see Oni causing trouble again, then that'll defeat the whole purpose of the sacrifice you made! <laughs> you make a good point. But Arataki Ito's the one who needs to get that into his thick skull. The Blue Oni are the bad guys, so we're expected to do bad things. Our actions won't tarnish the reputation of the Crimson Oni. Unless, of course, this bonehead decides it'd be a great idea to take all the blame for himself, completely destroying the trust between humans and the Crimson Oni in the process. He's the one that wasted the sacrifice we made. Huh? Well, I only had to do that because of you! I couldn't just stand back and let the Tenryo Commission drag you away. You should get your priorities straight. The Blue Oni are history, all right? Forget about us. The Crimson Oni are the ones who must live on. 
Why couldn't you have just stayed out of this? There they are! Seize them! Oh no! It's the Tyrio Commission! <sighs> Forget it! This was a waste of time anyway. Look, I don't expect you to understand me, but you could at least take a look in the mirror sometime. Hey! Hey! Oh, he got away! Uh-oh! We need to get a- <clears throat> We can't get caught here. Looks like I'm up to bat. Just wait here, and we'll escape together when the time's right. Whatever you do, don't attack any of the Tenryo Commission, or they'll be after you too. Battle formation! Get them! Attaboy! <laughs> Can't catch me! Come on, men! He won't get away this time! Just give yourself up, Arataki Ito! Uh, uh, Just quick! I uh, must withdraw. You cannot match my bravery. Who wants some of this? Let's roll! Man, they really came out in force today. I'm kind of flattered the Tenryo Commission sent so many. But I still haven't completely recovered from the bean attack earlier. I'm starting to lose my edge here. No, no way. All that would do is send them after our blue oni friend instead. But I have to settle things with him first, man to man. Then what should we do? The Tenryo Commission's about to arrest you! Uh, no choice but to keep kicking some Tenryo butt! Hey boss! Thought you'd have all the fun without us? Granny Oni sent us. We're here to lend a hand. Maybe we can't take him, but we can sure slow him down. Now's your chance! Go! Hey, I told you to stay out of this one. Well, we're in it now. Come on, there's no time! Go! Do what you gotta do, boss! <laughs> All right, then. Watch yourselves. Soon as I'm done, I'm coming back for you. Come on, you two. Time to roll! Don't let them get away! After them! Hey, you guys want some of this? There's plenty to go around. Run for it, boss! As boss of the Arataki gang, being rescued by my own boys feels pretty humiliating. I promise to never let you down, boys. All right, we've got some footprints to follow. Let's find Takuya. It was real touching and all what they did, but those few guys weren't much of a gang. Hey, it takes Mora to run a gang, okay? They're all I've got for now. Is it just me, or are there more and more footprints here? At least we know we're headed the right way. Let's see what else we can find ahead.
wrecked cart and some goods. Look alive, we've got company. Incoming! Oh my way! Nowhere to hide. Tidal wave! Brace yourself! This is gonna- Seems they definitely don't want us going any further. Let's see what's waiting for us up ahead. Huh. Besides the footprints, there are other signs of life here too. Must be plenty going on around here. Let's investigate. They couldn't have just dip Hidden entrance, yes! All right, I think we just found their hideout. This is gonna be where they keep all the people they took. Paimon thinks Taki is probably in there as well. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, fire away? <laughs> of course I did. Come on, I'm not that dumb. But it takes a world-class blockhead like Takuya to think his ideas are actually gonna work. So I'm here to save him no matter what. Huh? What were you two talking about? <laughs> All acquired by less than legitimate means, no doubt. And all the more reason we gotta put an end to this. Don't blink! Problemo. That'll be what this mechanism's for. Leave it all to me. There's more! Huh. Boom! Incoming! Huh. See? What did I tell you? Just trust my instincts. No time to lose. Take Let's get down to business. Ja. Going somewhere? Yeah. No time to lose. No more. Speed of light. To the fairy. Ha. Let's Hi. roll! To the fairy! Ah. To the fairy! Hi.
can't catch me. Time to lose. Huh? Look at all the people locked up in here. I must be holding on to them for leverage. All right, let's get them out of here. Okay. One step back, two forward. There's more! I must leave no stone unturned. Dear, we don't even know if he was taken here or not. But, but... Oh, my little Daisuke! Oh, you must be Daisuke's parents! Yes, that's right! Have you seen him? Where is he? Is he all right? Don't worry, he's safe and sound. Someone's looking after him now on Yashiori Island. I can show you where on the map. He's been worried about you. I bet he'll be relieved to see you. You were the one who saved him? Oh, thank you, thank <laughs> No, no, please, no. No need to thank me. It's... Before you go calling me a hero, let me ask you this. Wouldn't any other self-respecting guy who saw another person in danger have done the exact same thing? Really? Just one little compliment and it goes straight to his head. <sighs> These vagrants are insatiable. They'll do anything for money. No one dares stand up to them for fear of what they might do. Would they really do anything drastic? Um, no, actually, because one of the guys, the one with oni horns on his head, has always shielded us so far. Oh, in fact, his horns look just like the ones this guy has. At night, he would secretly bring us food and water. I don't understand what he was trying to do. Are you a friend of his? Or perhaps a relative? Uh, relative, I guess. Oh. Maybe there's something secretly troubling him. He seemed different from the rest of the gang. They seem like heartless crooks, but I'd say he comes across more like a confused child who made some poor choices. Uh, let me put it this way. There are a few things he needs to straighten out in his head, and I'm here to point him in the right direction. I'm glad to hear that. He's lucky to have family like you. <laughs> Don't worry. Anyway, you should scram. It's still not safe here. Yes, thanks again. You've rescued our entire family. We are indebted to you. Huh. Child that made some poor choices. Anyway, let's get going. While we still have time. the place. The jig's up. Surrender while you can. Leave it all to me. Huh. See no more! Yeah. <laughs> 
think you've won, don't ya? <laughs> so naive! This is my home turf. I'll let you in on a little secret. A long time ago, I picked up this rare paper charm. It's very precious to me. What makes it so special is that if you tear one piece, the other piece starts tearing too. Uh, Newsflash, don't care about your cute little origami obsession. You better stay where you are and let me finish. Aren't you curious what the other piece is used for? I'll tell you. It's now the critical component of a mechanism, and when it gets torn, this place goes up in smoke! Yeah, the whole hideout is rigged with explosives and ready to blow! What? You're gonna blow this whole place up? Oh, don't worry about me. I made sure that I've got an escape route. The rest of you, though, you're gonna be buried deep among the rubble. You've had your fun. Now it's goodbye. <laughs> my paper charm! Where's my paper charm? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you looking for this? Yes, that's... But when did you... I snatched it earlier, to stop you from doing anything hasty. Why, you... And now you're going to betray me? You're one to talk. What about burying everyone here? If you ask me, that sounds like you've already betrayed our agreement, no? <sighs> Just give it here! You done talking now? Huh? You sure? Great. Cause I'm done listening! Yeah. <sighs> Great work, Takuya. You arrived in the nick of time. Stay away from me. Huh? I said stay away, or I'll tear the paper charm. Hey, oh, okay, okay, uh, fine. Just calm down. What are you doing? Just because I won't let him blow this place to bits doesn't mean that I won't do it myself. Unless you want to get buried, you should leave this place now. Take everyone here and get out! <laughs> you won't go through with it. If you were that cruel, then why bother protecting every person you've come across? I'm not here to reason with you. Go! Just get out of here! This sacrifice is mine to make. Mine alone! Why couldn't you just stay out of it? No one needs to sacrifice themselves. All right, then you tell me. What am I supposed to do? I've tarnished our Oni pride and abandoned our ancestors' oath. Only sacrifice can restore my pride now. I chose this path so I could provide for my fellow Oni. I was ready to die from the very beginning. This is between us blue Oni. But you... If it wasn't for you, everything would have worked out perfectly. They're here. We won't let them slip away this time. Uh-oh. There's nowhere else to run- Hey, Tenryo Commission. I'm the one you're looking for. I did it. I'm behind everything. Our Taki Ito is innocent. You're the ones in charge of detaining criminals in human society, right? I'm sure you can tell who the criminal is here. Huh? It's like he's trying to reenact the fairy tale! Sacrificing himself for the Crimson Oni! Ignore him, he doesn't know what he's talking about. It's me you've been looking for, and here I am! How are you ever gonna report back without capturing me? <sighs> Stop fooling around, Ito! Listen, Takuya, sacrificing yourself won't solve anything. Your sacrifice can't protect me or your fellow Oni, and giving up your life isn't gonna make theirs any longer. Sacrificing yourself is one way to escape your fate, but the only one you'll be setting free is yourself. Listen to me. You wanna be the tough guy, huh? Well, this is the coward's way out. Don't let your sacrifice stain our Oni pride. <sighs> the blue Oni have been scraping the bottom of the barrel all these years, so let's give them a new beginning. They've made mistakes, but we can make up for them. Fate hasn't been kind to the Oni? Well then let's tear it up and start over! But before any of that can happen, you need to get yourself behind me and forget about all that self-sacrifice stuff. Now let's go. But we're not done talking about this. Uh, talk